Let's keep going. So we talk about the EC coupling in the skeletal muscle, and the contact muscle use exactly the same molecular mechanism. Still the actin myosin, still calcin triggered and contraction. But um, I told you, contact muscle is more advanced. It does not have the shortcoming of skeletal muscle. Now let's look at the shortcoming part. Skeletal muscle very powerful. It can produce a big power, so you can you can run, you can exercise. When we look at the Talk about the action potential in the neuron. The action potential very quickly. It take about two, three milliseconds, finish one action potential. And this action potential are able to transfer to the action potential of the muscle. So you can generate muscle's own action potential. And this action potential gonna go through the T tubule called the AV muscle fiber. Okay, the action potential of the muscle still very quickly. It takes about two milliseconds to finish one action potential. Now, EC coupling, you have the contraction. Contraction, you have the contraction phase, relaxation phase. This whole uh, event take about 40 to 100 milliseconds. That's the problem. Let's see what's the problem. If you only have low intensity of muscle contraction, it's not a problem. They call it one muscle twitch. Muscle twitch is, is one muscle contraction relaxation. It's not a problem. But when you start to increase your uh, exercise, increase your muscle tone, you start to have more muscle contraction. Say you are, you are uh, exercising, you need to trigger more muscle contraction. Because the action potential, you, you only take about two milliseconds to finish one action potential. So what's going to happen is you trigger one muscle contraction and you have a contraction relaxation before it completely relaxes, before all the calcium being pumped back to the SR, it, there's another action potential because you can generate action potential in two milliseconds. So, and before it completely relax, another contraction happens. That's what happened. It's gonna accumulate. It's gonna accumulate until you reach it called the tenderness. Tenderness is muscle contraction only, no relaxation. And once you reach the tenderness, you only have muscle contraction, no relaxation. And or you can make it worse, they call it complete tenderness. The muscle don't even bother to relax, it only have contraction. And if this happens, I believe you all experience it in your life. Muscle cramp. Yeah, that's muscle cramp. And when you have muscle cramp, you found, oh, my muscle contract, I could not relax it. Because this happens, all the muscle reach contraction, no relaxation. And when you have muscle cramp, uh, you rest for 10 minutes, 2 hours, and your muscle will be fine, right? And sometimes you may heard your friend ask you, eat banana. Why eat banana? Potassium. Uh, that's the action potential part. Uh, or drink orange juice, similar, because they have a lot of ions inside. And I say when you have muscle cramp, you rest, because you need to give time. I give your muscle time for them to pump the calcium back to normal, for them to redistribute those ions back to the normal. Uh, ECF supposed to have high sodium, ICF supposed to have high potassium, and all the calcium supposed to go back to the SR. Uh, and that's the shortcoming of skeletal muscle. Yeah, it, can, it can have muscle cream. And imagine if this happens in your heart. Game over. You, you rest forever. So, so the heart muscle could not allow this to happen. Could not allow this to happen. So that's why I say the heart muscle is the advanced muscle. It's all the advantage of skeletal muscle. It can quickly produce a big power. It, it produces a huge power. But it could not allow this to happen. So you could not afford to have too many of them. These are expensive toys. Kind of like the the the, the cones in the in the retina. These are the expensive toys. You can have a few of them, you put all of them in the fovea. So the contact muscle, you, 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 they are expensive toys, they are more advanced muscles. So you collect all of them, you put them in the in the heart, and they are cardiac muscle. They are not smooth muscle, all the other inner organs they use smooth muscle. They don't, don't produce a big power. In the heart, the cardiac muscle, they are able to produce a big power, and they they don't have the shortcoming, that's the muscle cramp. So now let's go back to look at the, the cardiac muscle, the heart muscle. The heart muscle still use calcium to trigger contraction, and the contraction is graded. So if you want to have a, uh, a bigger 
contraction in the cardiac muscle to send more blood out, stroke volume, because stroke volume increase, you increase the ICF calcium. So the contracting force is, is based on the ICF uh, calcium availability. So more contraction, bigger calcium. And the signal of the heart start from the heart itself. So the signal pacemaker cells. And you have different group of pacemaker cells. Their job is spontaneously fire, generate action potential. And the the most famous one is called the SA node on the right atrium. So they are, they are cardiac muscle, they are cardiac muscle, but they don't produce the power. Their job is generate action potential again and again. Excuse me. And those action potential are able to go from the pacemaker cells because the intercollected desk, you have gap junction. We talked about this in the previous uh, lecture. Because of the gap junction, the ions can go from the cell 1 to cell 2 to cell 3, so they pass out. So it, it turns out the whole heart muscle, it works together. It works like one cell. They fire together, and they fire together, they contract together. Uh, specifically, not the whole heart like one. It's, it's like one cell. It's like two cells because the signal is going to go to the two atria, left and right atria. So the left and the right atria, they work together, they fire together, and they, they contract together. Then the signal will go to the two ventricles, and the two ventricle cells, uh, ventricles have a huge uh, cardiac muscle. So they fire together, they contract together. So it turns out your heart is like two cells, atrium, ventricle, atrium, ventricle. And when we talk about the heart beat, you found you, your heart is boom, 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 boom in this sequence, not just one sound. And that's because the two atriums, they work together like one cell, and two ventricles, they work together together like one cell. And the action potential of the pacemaker cells, since they are able to spontaneously generate action potential, compared with the contractile cells, they passively receive the action potential from the pacemaker cell to generate action potential. So the action potential of the pacemaker cells and contractile cells, they are different. So let's look at the, uh, the action potential of the pacemaker cells. The action potential of pacemaker cells look like this. So start from depolarization and gradually go to the threshold, action potential again, and depolarization, action potential, depolarization, action potential. So first you found you don't have a stabilized resting membrane potential. This is a very unique part. When we talk about the neuron, okay, and those action potential, they have a resting membrane potential about minus 70 millivolt, and then they depolarize, reach the threshold, and generate the action potential. For the pacemaker cells, they don't have a stabilized resting membrane potential. They always shift out. And for those electrophysiologists, when they study the action potential of the heart muscle, the pacemaker cells, they, they found it's, it's difficult for them to accept this because they, they always, the first step to do the patch clamp, the electrophysiology, is to find a stable resting membrane potential. It took them a while to figure out it's not their equipment, it's something wrong with their equipment. It's the pacemaker cells. They never have a stabilized resting membrane potential. And they thought it's funny. How come this happens? So they call this funny current. And they call the iron channel responsible for it the funny channel. So what's the funny channel? It turned out it's a very specialized group of channel. They are hyperpolarized opening voltage-gated ion channel. When we talk about the ion channel, I told you there's three different groups of ion channel, voltage-gated, mechanical-gated, and ligand-gated. And the voltage-gated ion channel, normally, they receive the voltage change. So when the depolarization is big enough, the voltage-gated ion channel open. And if it's a voltage-gated sodium channel, sodium gonna flow in. And if it's a voltage-gated potassium channel, potassium flow out, and it generate action potential. Yes, that's the normal one. And those funny channel, they are very special, specialized one. It belong to a specialized hyperpolarization opened end channel. So when the membrane potential is hyperpolarized, this funny channel open. And when the funny channel open, this IF channel, funny channel. Funny channel are like nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. It is 
is actually non-selective cation channel. And if the net result, the net result is sodium flow in. So sodium flow in is much faster than potassium flow out. So when those funny channel opens, when the cell is hyperpolarized, the net result is sodium flow in, so it causes the depletion. That's why they're, they're, they never have stabilized the resting membrane potential. It slowly drifts out until it reaches the threshold. It reaches the threshold to open the voltage-gated calcium channel. So that's a different part compared with neuron. The depolarization of the, of the uh, pacemaker cells is due to the calcium flow in. Depolarization part of the action potential is due to the calcium flow in. Then the calcium channel close, potassium channel open. So this part is the same. Potassium flow out. So you finish one action potential of pacemaker cell. Now the cell is hyperpolarized. The funny channel open again, and it slowly drift to the. I say slowly. Actually, not too slow because your heart rate is 60 to 70 beats per minute. It means less than one second. This can happen. And when you reach the threshold, okay, or well, another action potential, because of the funny channel. The pacemaker cells don't need external signal to ask them to trigger the action potential. So you don't need motor neuron to ask your heart, hey, start to generate action potential. And when you go to sleep, you forget and you die. <laughs> you, we, we could not afford this to happen. So the pacemaker cells need to spontaneously generate the action potential. And because of the funny channel. Plus, and you say, well, the your, your autonomic system can, can regulate your heart rate, your sympathetic system. You told me through so the beta receptor can work on the heart. Yes, they can modulate the heart rate. means they are able to increase sympathetic system, are able to increase the heart rate. Parasympathetic system are able to decrease the heart rate. But the signal comes from the pacemaker cells. The pacemaker cells. So the autonomic nervous system only modulates the heart rate. Now let's look at the action potential of the contractile cells. You found the contractile cells, they have a very stabilized resting membrane potential because they receive the signal from the pacemaker cell. So they don't need to have the funny channel to spontaneously fire. They, they, they receive the signal. So they have a st stabilized resting membrane potential. Then the depolarization part due to the voltage-gated uh, sodium, sorry, sodium channel open. Then sodium flow in, so the permeability of sodium flow in causes the depletion. And you say, okay, let's open the potassium, the potassium flow out. Then this action potential is going to take two milliseconds to finish. And I told you, you, you the, the cut muscle is the advanced muscle. It need to prevent muscle cramp. So the way it prevents the muscle cramp is it makes the whole action potential take much longer to finish. We talk about refractory period in the neuron. Refractor period is the time these, these cells is generating the action potential. These ion channels are not available to generate another one. And in the neuron, the refractory period is short. And when we talk about neuron, I told you when we go to the, the cardiac muscle, I will talk about refractory period again. This here. In the cardiac muscle, the refractory period is long. Because of this, it's long, it prevents tenderness. How to make it long? We increase another ions. So after the sodium channel open, sodium flow in, depletion, then they, they, they add one more ion channel, which is calcium. They open the voltage-gated calcium channel. When the voltage-gated calcium channel open, calcium is going to flow in. So this calcium flow in cancel out potassium flow out. So it reach a plate two, they call the calcium plate two. So number two is calcium plate two due to the calcium channel open. And this calcium plate two make the ion like the action potential last for longer, about 250 to 300 milliseconds to finish. And because of that, after the whole action potential finish, the muscle relax already. So you won't have muscle cramp compared with skeletal muscle. You can have muscle cramp, you can accumulate. Uh, the action potential of the cardiac muscle is so long. Its refractory period is so long, so you won't have muscle cramp. That's the advantage of the cardiac muscle compared with skeletal muscle. So your heart muscle won't have muscle cramp. That's why I call it advanced muscle. Let's take a break.